Hello class, this video is presenting information about calculating the osmotic pressure of uh, various solutions. Uh, talking about the recovery and arrangement of uh, reverse osmosis uh, modules, uh, how modules are staged, and then we'll have an interesting uh, example of um, membranes. There are many different kind of um, polymers that are used in different kinds of membranes, ultrafiltration membranes, reverse osmosis, microfiltration membranes, but m many of them, nearly all of them, have structures similar to what you see here, where there's an active layer, which is typically very thin, because that's where the resistance uh, to flow goes. And then there's a support layer, which uh, physically supports the active layer uh, and provide some strength and resistance to the um, high pressure differentials. What you see here are typical configurations of, um, of membranes. They are uh, originally were flat sheets and they were configured as a spiral wound membranes um, to uh, compact the area of um, the flat membranes. There are uh, tubular membranes that are, uh, of course, round, and they're more uh, arranged like heat exchangers, conventional heat exchangers. And then there are hollow fiber type membranes that are uh, taking advantage of a very high surface area. Here you can see the arrangement of uh, spiral wound membranes and there's separators. And uh, to the right, you can see uh, pictures of stages of, of modules. And here's an example of um, hollow fibers. And hollow fibers uh, can range from this size, which is roughly, uh, looks like about two millimeters in diameter, to the size of human hair, so, which is common for air separation uh, membranes, but not really for fluid handling membranes. Okay, we'll pause here. So the osmotic pressure calculation is based on equation 6.4, uh, which happens to be on page 6.4 of our book. The um, <coughs> uh, osmotic pressure symbol is pi, and it uses the uh, concentration of the um, solute in terms of moles per liter, a uh, correction factor, which is typically around 0 0.9, 0 0.85 to 1, uh, and I is the number of ions. R, of course, is the gas constant, and T is the temperature in degrees Kelvin. So, and of course, that's not uh, degrees centigrade. So, for seawater, which is typically about 35,000 milligrams of sodium chloride, or 3.5% salt, we'll go ahead on that basis. So of course the molecular weight of sodium is 23 and chlorine is 35.45. So the molecular weight of sodium chloride is uh, 58.45 and uh, we get that the ratio or the weight ratio of the sodium is 39.35% and for chlorine it's 60.65. I is 2, uh, omega is 0.9, the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade or 298 degrees um, Kelvin. Keep in mind that 35 degrees um, or 35,000 milligrams per liter is uh, 35 grams per liter. So that makes the um, concentration uh, 0.6 grams moles per liter, or roughly 0.6 kilogram moles per meter cube. It's very important to get the units right. If you get the units right going into the problem, then the problem comes out easily. If you don't, then you get trying to convert units and milligrams and cubic meters and it, it becomes an issue. So you can see putting these this information into the equation, uh, the pressure is 2,000 
676 kilopascals, which happens to be 26.4 atmospheres or uh, 388 psi. So for um, uh, reference, um, most of us are still thinking in multiple uh, types of units. So reverse osmosis modules are uh, usually um, diagrammed in this manner, which is the way it's done in our book. Feed coming in from the left, a membrane, uh, the permeate or the product water is going out um, and down on the right, and the reject water is going out to the right. The recovery is the product quantity divided by the feed quantity. And a typical value is about 35% per stage. Higher recovery is very desirable in many situations um, for a number of reasons. For example, uh, there's limited feed water supply. Uh, you could have a high uh, disposal cost of the concentrate. You could have a high pretreatment cost, which is obviously the case in, in some times. So the solution for uh, increasing the recovery is, uh, in one way, is uh, recirculation around the single module or staging. The recirculation would look like this, where you're going around and around, and that would be a common practice for a smaller facility. And the uh, staging option is like this, where you would have several modules in series, uh, collecting the product off each one, and then the um, reject stream from the first would go to the second, and from the second to the third. This is a usual choice for larger systems for seawater. 